and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church Online Worship. Coming to you from one of Boise's community gardens of a local church. We're back in the garden today with another parable from Jesus about growing the kingdom. Well, I learned something about uh, one of the members of this church that they have done differently in this garden this year. This summer, the back portion is all for the community garden but the front portion has been given to a new American family who has planted seeds from their own native crops. And so as this food goes to those in our community, uh, given to a local food bank and others who are in need, we are reminded that the goodness of creation is for all of God's people. And so we begin by giving thanks for the fruit of all creation.
faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from the old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear, do not be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock, I know not one. Please join me in the psalm when the words appear on your screen. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In a former parish that I served back in the Midwest, there was a very active retired men's group. The guys would get together in the morning, I think it was usually about once a month, have their coffee, have their donuts, have their time of uh, just chewing the fat and uh, connecting with each other. And then they would launch into whatever project it was that they had designated for the day. 
Well, every year in the springtime, they would devote one of those days to planting flowers in the backside of the church. And so one year when they did that, they did another beautiful job and uh, felt good about the work they had done. But then the next day, when I came to church and when I parked in the back, I noticed that somebody had come during the night and dug up all those freshly planted marigolds. There was not one of them that was left behind. I couldn't believe it. I always think of that when I hear that story of Jesus today. While some people are busy sowing good seeds of the kingdom, others are thwarting it with their evil deeds. Oh, if we could just get rid of the bad guys so the good guys would prevail, wouldn't the world be such a better place to live in? And yet sometimes what we find is that it's not always all that easy to separate the good from the bad. A recent acquaintance of mine was telling me how much she loved gardening and how well her garden was doing this year. But she also told me a time of when she had had a garden failure. She had planted her garden in neat and orderly straight rows and was so precise about the planting and then also was so faithful with the watering and the weeding and just paying such close attention to her garden. Well, she had a friend whose garden was just the opposite. She was not precise at all, and she let her own garden go so that there were weeds everywhere. Well, it turned out they had a freeze that year, and so my friend lost all of her crops. Well, her friend, because she had let those weeds grow up with the other plants, she continued to get a great harvest. Maybe a modern day parable for what Jesus is trying to teach us today, for us to be more like that patient householder and just let the weeds and the wheat grow up together until the time of harvest. Well, we sometimes are much more like those servants who just wanna get in there and pull out all those bad weeds Assuming, of course, that we are the ones who are the wheat, and it's those other people who are the weeds. Several weeks ago, when we were first being advised to wear masks out in public, I was amazed when I went to my grocery store, where I usually shop, at how many people were not wearing masks. Not only was I amazed, I was disgusted with them and their uncaring attitudes towards others as I would glare behind my mask at them in the store and quickly steer my cart away from them. Oh, how easy it was for me to see the speck in my neighbor's eye and not see the log in my own. Well, I was horrified about a week later when I got to the store to do my shopping and I realized that I had forgotten to bring with me my own mask. And so as I went about my shopping, I was just hoping that others weren't looking at me with the same judgment with which I had looked at them. Which one of us is not a mixture of wheat and weeds together at the same, in the same person? Or as Martin Luther once said, how we are simultaneously saint and sinner at once. Yet God doesn't condemn us for our sin. Instead, as the psalmist today reminds us, God is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding with steadfast love. Through this parable, Jesus teaches us that it is neither our place nor in our power to cast judgment upon others. There will be a time when God, not we, will vindicate and when there will be an end to the evil that we see now. 
God's reign is inevitable, and we can trust with confidence that God's goodness will prevail. In the meantime, we live in a world where both good and evil coexist, sometimes even within ourselves. Last week, I told you about traveling through the Palouse up north that specific region in the Pacific Northwest that is just amazing farmland, maybe some of the best in the country. And as I was sharing that with a friend of mine, he told me about growing up in that area and about the summer job that he used to have. He was hired by local farmers to go out with other teenage boys like him and to pull rye out from those fields those wheat fields. Apparently, long ago, there had been rye that was also planted, but it was no longer there and being planted as one of the crops. However, it would still come up as a volunteer or a wild grain. And so they would go out there and pull that rye just as they were instructed. But the trouble was, as he said, it didn't do much good. The next summer, those same boys would pull the rye again, which they knew was going to come back the very next year. And so after a while, those farmers quit paying those boys to walk and trample in the wheat fields as they killed more plants with good seed than they did destroying those hardy rye plants. When we focus so much on the bad, what's evil in the world and in ourselves, we lose focus on what our true purpose is, to nurture that seed of faith that has been planted inside us and to help it grow and develop and mature, to become those good and loving people that God desires us to be and for us to help others do the same. In the movie, Dead Man Walking, Roman Catholic sister Helen Prejean, upon whom this movie is based, struggles with allowing that presence of good and evil to coexist together. In her role as a spiritual advisor of an unrepentant inmate on death row, she lives with the many faces of evil shown to her through this heinous crime that he has committed and through an inhumane prison system as well as a hatred that's directed towards this inmate for committing the crime and also towards her. There were no easy weeds to pull from this complex and complicated garden and she had no interest in just pointing fingers of blame at others. Her mission was not to excuse or ignore or to get rid of evildoers. Her mission was only to patiently see others as Jesus sees all of us, as beloved children of God in need of healing and grace. By the end of the movie, her ability to hold the wheat and the weeds together by concentrating on the good and not on the evil had a tremendous effect, not only on the criminal as he is able to confess his sin and receive forgiveness and mercy, but also on the victim's own father whose daughter was brutally raped and killed as he was able to finally let go of his hatred and even be able to love his enemy amazed himself at the way that he was able to change and to be transformed, he tells Sister Prejean how much he admires her faith, to which she answers him, faith is work. Tending God's garden is indeed no small task. It takes work to grow into the people that God calls us to be. But that's the work that we do, knowing that it will yield the best kind of harvest. When a colleague of mine moved to a different house a few years ago, the lawn was a patchwork of weeds. So he called up a local landscaper and asked, which weed killer should I use? Oh, don't use any at all. 
the guy said, it will only weaken the grass. Just fertilize water and cut the grass. And as the grass gets stronger, it will crowd out those weeds. Well, in these challenging times in which we find ourselves, it can be, e it can be easy to become overcome by the bad. Paying attention to the news 24 seven, which only seems to get worse and worse by the day, can simply weaken our nerves and kill our spirits. Better to do the work of building ourselves up instead, strengthening our faith to crowd out the forces of evil. Recently, one of our members from Emmanuel shared a video with me, and I was so moved by this video that I'd like to share it with you now. This week with a lesson in forgiveness from Steve Hartman on the road. It all went down on this block in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Back in 05, Jamel McGee says he was minding his own business when a police officer accused him of and arrested him for dealing drugs. You saying the officer made it up? Yeah, it was all made up. Of course, a lot of accused men make that claim, but not many arresting officers agree. So you phonied the report? I did, I, I falsified the report. This is former Benton Harbor police officer Andrew Collins. Were you just trying to chalk up an arrest? Well, basically, the start of that day, I was going to make sure I had another drug arrest. And in the end, you put an innocent guy in jail? Correct. Yeah. You lost everything. I lost everything. My only goal was to seek him when I got home and to hurt him. Really? That was my goal. Eventually, that crooked cop was caught, served a year and a half for falsifying many police reports, planting drugs and stealing. Of course, Jamal was exonerated, but he still spent four years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Today, both men are back here in Benton Harbor, which is a small town, maybe a little too small. Hey guys, thank you. Last year, by sheer coincidence, they both ended up at Mosaic, a faith-based employment agency where they now work side by side in the same cafe. Oh, excuse me. And it was in these cramped quarters that the bad cop and the wrongfully accused had no choice but to have it out. And I said, honestly, I have no explanation. All I can do is say I'm sorry. And Jamel says that was all it took. That was pretty much what I needed to hear. Today, they're not only cordial. It's Saturday, we went to the trampoline park. They're friends. Uh, you know, we talk about life. Such close friends. Not long ago, Jamel actually told Andrew he loved him. And I just started weeping because he doesn't owe me that. Uh, he, I don't deserve that, you know? Did you forgive for his sake or for yours? No, for our sake. Not just us, for our sake. Jamel went on to tell me about his Christian faith and his hope for a kinder <laughs> mankind. He wants to be an example. So now he and Andrew give speeches together about the importance of forgiveness and redemption. I'll grab this one, set it over there. And clearly, if these two guys from the coffee shop can set aside their bitter grounds, what's our excuse? Steve Hartman on the road in Benton Harbor, Michigan. And that's how we make our gardens grow, inch by inch and row by row, as we fertilize with forgiveness and mercy, and as we water with grace and compassion, doing the work of faith. While we patiently wait for the harvest to come. Amen. Lord, build us up. 
set in us a strong foundation lead us to do your holy will form and shape your new creation build us up Lord build us up as we guide and teach each other help us to share your love with the world every sister every brother growing in Christ we plant seeds for the kingdom we follow in faith what's begun Lord set in our hearts the power The news of your Son. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Let our lives reflect your glory. Cast away all our doubts and fears. Help us tell the story. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Help us bear good fruit for you. Lord, give us vision and keep us sure. Grant us faith that's steadfast and true. We plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun. Lord, set in our hearts the power of your word to spread the news of your Son. To spread the news of your Son. Please join me in the prayers of intercession. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, be with all those who plant and harvest the crops that feed us. May we support farmers who till the land and workers who labor in the fields with a fair distribution of the abundance you provide for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family wherever we are torn apart by conflict. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love to always be mindful of the greater good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, including those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel, we pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember them with thanksgiving, the saints of all times and places 
and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And as you take your piece of bread, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Good morning, Emmanuel Congregation. I'm Barbara Schmidt, part of our Food Fellowship team, and I'm here today to give you a little bit of an update about what we're doing. So we've been incredibly busy during this pandemic. For the year prior, we were averaging about 65 guests every week. We are now averaging 117 or more guests every week. Plus, we are, in addition to that, we are providing meals to our friends across the street at Capitol Plaza Apartments, which is subsidized housing for disabled and elderly residents, and any extras we're sending down to Corpus Christi for some additional food for them as well. We've really appreciated those that have been making desserts for us, and we continue to need your help. So if you're able to make desserts for August, please sign up on the iVolunteer website. Additionally, I just want to give a huge shout out for the once a month um, donations of making and providing us meals from both Texas Roadhouse and from the Oak Barrel in Eagle. We really appreciate their assistance in helping us move forward. And lastly, I wanna thank the ladies that have been assisting making literally hundreds of masks for our guests so that they can stay safe and now be compliant with Boise rules. So thank you, please volunteer for the desserts and see you next time.